Health Talks. This time Nat is going to talk to us a bit about fertility. Well, that's right, Jess. Being a natural fertility specialist, I'm constantly asked the same questions as to why there's so many people having trouble having babies. And so I want to share with you today my top five tips on fertility. It's a bit of an epidemic, isn't it? It's, it's crazy. It really yeah. is. And I think the problem is that our environment and our lifestyles are, are really reflective of our health. And, and being a product of our environment as well, we're finding that a lot of people are having a lot of trouble having babies. So what's your number one tip? What's first on the list? So first on the list is stress, and we all need to stress a little less. I think that stress can lead to issues with all sorts of reproductive function. It can be the number one cause of endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, um, and just general hormone imbalance. Um, also for men too, it can make their semen quite um, strange. It can give it you know, two heads or two tails and, and, and not lead to a viable pregnancy. So it is really important that we look at ways to decrease stress or we look at things like acupuncture or massage, things that can help our bodies cope better with stress. Because reality is we can't always remove it, but we can help our body cope better with that. Yeah, stress isn't really good for any part of us, is it? Especially chronic stress. No, yeah. exactly. It, it, it's more, yeah, chronic stress, but it's also the low grade that yeah. constant stress that can also right. be an issue. So yeah, where we can, just finding ways to help our bodies to de-stress is, is the key there. Next on my list is sleep. And we need to be getting to sleep before 11 p.m. at night if possible. And this is because it's in this time that our bodies rejuvenate and renew themselves. And so um, we need to just make sure that where we are getting sleep that it's of, of great quality. So, you know, looking at sort of seven to eight hours a night um, is important. And the reason behind this is because ovulation is affected by a hormone called prolactin and when we don't have enough sleep prolactin levels will rise which will decrease the chances of ovulation occurring. Wow, so how does that how does that stop ovulation? Our bodies are super clever and they work also on what's called the circadian rhythm. So when it's daytime, we need to be awake and when it's nighttime, we need to be asleep. Mm. I guess it's no surprise. I mean, we all know how crappy we feel when we run on lack of sleep. So it makes sense that our hormones would be affected as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we know how we know how tired we look when we're when we're tired. And so I'm fairly sure if we went down inside and had a look at our reproductive organs, they'd be looking pretty tired too. Mm. It's so interesting that because our, our lifestyles are so toxic and especially our water. I know that the water that we drink is actually actually affecting our health in more ways than we expect. The water that we drink can be a little bit scary actually. Mm. In Australia, we have fairly good water, but there are areas where water is recycled, treated and then filtered. And um, what we know is that it does a pretty good job of sifting out a lot of the toxins, but two things that it doesn't treat well is antibiotics and the pill. So these things essentially are coming back in or not being cleansed out of our water and we're actually re-ingesting them again. So that can cause really large problems with women with ovulation problems too. Wow, so in some areas you're saying that we're actually drinking the pill. That's right, we are which is pretty gross. That's disgusting. Yeah, it is. And women with ovulation problems, this is not going to do them any favours. It's actually really gross. Oh, that's disgusting. I know. Okay, so I have another question. Go. Is it true that if you have more sex, it, it, it will make you more fertile? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> that's so true, yeah. The more that we're exercising our reproductive organs, the better they're going to be. A marathon runner doesn't just run once every so often in training. It, he runs or she runs really regularly. And so the same thing goes for our reproductive organs. We need to be exercising them as much as we can, which one way to do that is regular sex. So what this will do, it, it will increase blood flow. And that is um, important for our hormones. But it's also important that if there is an embryo there waiting to be implanted, it is encouraged to do so in an environment which is really nutrient rich, where there's lots of blood, th blood flow, and that's what sex will do. Sex will increase the blood flow and become that environment for this embryo to implant in. So there's many reasons why. It's also good for your, your, you know, your relationship too. So that's another factor that we can't dismiss either. God, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Bet you are. <laughs> now, Jess. Diet is a huge factor and our gut is the pivot of our health. So we know that when we're eating the right things, our bodies just work well. And that's because nutritionally, they're happy. They have everything. So, I mean, organic is always west, best where possible and whole foods, you know, it is very important that we're eating a good range of whole foods. Absolutely. So all of these toxins that are covering all the foods that we're eating can't be doing much help either. And 
What about weight? I know that that's an issue as well. Yeah, that's right. Weight is an issue. And I guess this brings us to a sixth point today. I said I was only going to talk about five, but I see diet and weight to go hand in hand. And so we need to be mindful that weight will affect our fertility. I'm going to show you a ripper recipe shortly, and, and it's from my book, but it will it shows you or it's a way to, to um, make sure that you're getting in the right amounts of fats and proteins. And our hormones are made of fats and proteins. So we need to make sure that we're getting the, a good quality amount of those in. Now what might happen when people start to eat for their fertility is that they may notice that they may gain a little bit of weight or they may lose a little bit of weight and that's nothing to be disheartened about but we just need to be aware that our fertile weight and our ideal weight may not be the same thing but when we're when we're coming to make babies we need to make sure our body's happy and healthy and that might mean a few extra kilos. Mm. So just to sum all of this up what we need to do is stress less, sleep more, cut some of those in, in our toxins out of our environment, get between the sheets a little bit more and eat for fertility. And then we've got a bit of a winning formula. Is that That's right? it. But before we sign off, we're going to head across to the LG kitchen where I'm going to demonstrate a recipe from my ebook, which is available on the site. But what you'll also find is before we do that is from time to time, we're going to get off the couch. We're going to head into the kitchen or demonstrate. The bathroom. Yep, the like bathroom. <laughs> and we're going to share with you different ways that you can implement all of this that we're sharing with you into your life. So we're here in the LG kitchen and I've found Sam and Sam's been here today. What have you been doing in here today, Sam? I've been teaching an organic superfoods masterclass here at the LG kitchen in the South Melbourne market in Victoria. We've had a hands-on class for 10 people and they've just left and you've just arrived. So welcome. <laughs> and Sam runs these classes and it's something that from time to time we'll advertise and you'll, you'll find out about it. So you'll, yeah. you'll know when they're on and they're fabulous. I've done, I've done one have before. Indeed. I have. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook um, this recipe from my book, which is Fertilise Yourself, available on the site. And it's my ricotta and spinach pie. So we need to combine for the base. The base is made with rice. So it's, it's, which um, I love, which is great. Yeah, so wheat we, free, gluten yeah, free. wheat free, gluten free. So we combine two cups of brown rice with about 40 grams of, I've just melted the coconut butter okay. so that it, it's easier to, great. I mean, you don't have to worry about this in Byron, do you? No. <laughs> yes, because no, the, but, no, the coconut butter isn't there. quite as solidified as what we get being cold in Melbourne. And then we're going to add two egg yolks. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want the, just the yolk, no white? Just the yolk. We'll yep. use the white with the um, filling. Great. Yeah, we'll use it all. So I'm going to do that in here. Oh, you should be doing this. You're probably better at this than me. Hey. But what you can get is a spoon to mix it if you okay. want. Yeah, there's one next to me here. I'll use this one. Great. You so this start. is a really great base because it is yeah. so easy. All you need is to have the rice cooked off. Yeah, so it's the rice just, is cooked, that's right. So we've got the protein from the yolk to bind it. Yeah, there we go. And the coconut oil. And could you use any other kind of um, that's fat, the thing. do you think? You could use, you could use um, dairy, you could use okay. cow's butter. or. But I think for what we're trying to achieve and the fact that, you know, there's people that will be making this that... Um, might not have dairy. Yes, then I might prefer it to might be better this way. Vegetarian. Yes. So then, once that's combined, you can just press it into the, the okay. dish. Do you want to do so it? So, do we need to grease it? No, I that didn't. Just, okay, so that'll <laughs> just press in. That's fine. Yeah, because I think there's enough. Well, the coconut enough. oil will help to yeah. line that. I we'll, think just, so. we'll just throw that over there, shall yeah, we? Yeah, great. Shall I do this? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. You can just press it in nice and easily. Great, how easy is this? I know, it's really good. And it's the thing awesome. is, what we're trying to achieve here is that we need to remember that, like I said earlier, that our hormones are made up of fats and protein. And so yes. we need to make sure that we're getting quality fats and protein in. And we're getting that. The brown rice has got good protein in it. The coconut butter as well um, has is a great therapeutic fat. So, um, you know, when it comes to making happy, healthy hormones, this is what it's all about. All right, like now it. we there just need go. to pop that into the oven for 15 okay. minutes on 180. Easy. Fabulous. And of course, there's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> now, all we have to do is combine 500 grams of ricotta. Okay. You could use whatever. You could use feta or goat's cheese or whatever with about two cups of spinach. So I'm just going to use a couple of handfuls. Sure. Yeah, you can combine that. So and could you do this in a food processor as oh, well? Oh, you probably yeah, could. Yeah, just whiz it up. Yeah, I, there's not a lot to. of room in that bowl, is there, Sam? Oh, but, you know, <laughs> we'll make it work, won't we? And then we're going to add the rest of that, oh, that white okay, cool. as well as another two eggs. Okay. 
Wow. There you go in there, Sam. Is it going to fit? I love it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You happy for me to do this? Yes. Might yes, be you easier. can be the egg person. Thank you. Because I'm, I'm so eggs. good. Oh, well. So it's, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> All right. Combine <laughs> that and just a teaspoon of nutmeg just for a bit of flavour and some awesome. salt and pepper to season. But um, you can add that now at the end. It doesn't really matter too much. And basically, we're just going to combine this and pop it into the, the uh, dish, with yep. it, which has already got the base in there. How's it I'm going there? a little bit more of a mix up so the yolks incorporate. Sure. So we don't get any streaks too. Okay. As well, so you get this kind of even distribution of the protein as well. And colour. Excellent. Okay, and there's a bit and of you could use And you could use any variation of the filling. You might want to put some mushrooms in there or... Some roasted vegetables yep. maybe, roasted yep. capsicum, yeah. Yeah, and you know, you can play around with it. It's, okay, it's so really, we'll really variable. Excellent. I love it. it's great. So yeah, so basically we, we fill the, the base with the, um, the filling and we're going to cook that in the oven for just until the top kind of goes okay. brown. So, so it just not, needs to set, yes? Yeah, so it just the needs eggs to, need to set, set. It's not okay. very long, 10 minutes or so. Um, beautiful. Beautiful. Easy. Yeah. And there you have it. So once we've cooked it, it'll just it'll look pretty much like that except for brown. Um, <laughs> and um, you can serve that with a, a nice green salad or, or you know, even some meat for if you've got some people over that are vegetarian and, um, yeah, and meat eaters. And um, that's it's my... A great, great party flan too. It is. Yeah, and that's wonderful. my ricotta and spinach pie.